Hello amazing atheist, the practitioner here. I uh, just woke up from my nap and I wanted to post a video response to this now that I still had it on my mind and I still had the page open. Uh, I wanted to speak to you specifically about the bit where you were saying that um, yes, that a dog collar, uh, sorry, that a that since a, um, that since beating a dog and a child were both abuse, why, uh, um, why should therefore um, putting a, an electric collar on a child be considered abuse if on a child if it's not on a dog? Well, there's two things I want to mention with this. One of which is that there are some animal activists, mostly with PETA and other shit like that, who actually consider um, using such a technique on a dog to be inhumane, uh, and that in some cases it may even uh, cause the dog to become more irate, um, more aggressive, etc., just from the uh, constant shocking. Um, an example, a movie example of this would be if you went to see Crank 2 High Voltage, they actually had a dialogue about this. But that's not the only issue, however. Even if, like, let's just assume that I didn't buy that for a second. Let's just assume that, uh, that I thought it was perfectly okay. Uh, and, and I should mention that I'm uh, kind of wishy-washy on the whole electronic caller issue myself. But let's just hypothetically assume that I didn't buy the argument for a second. Uh, there is one fatal difference between, uh, there, is, uh, there is one major difference between, uh, okay, let's just, um, now I, I'm not, I don't even think those callers are sentient, uh, sorry, I don't even think those callers are generally appropriate anyway. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of wishy-washy, but let's just assume, let's just assume for a second that I thought it was okay on a dog. There would still be a major reason why it's not okay on a child. Using a dog collar like that is intended to teach the dog. Now, remember that a dog's brain is considerably less in size and less in complexity than a human brain. A, uh, a dog, a dog for the most part does not have the, uh, abstract reasoning and self-aware, uh, self-awareness and logic capabilities to understand not only that something is wrong, but why it is wrong. That's why nowadays we have timeouts, we explain to kids and, stu and stuff like that, uh, you know, as we've developed, uh, uh, you know, uh, as we are now in a reasoning culture, we, uh, you know, those of us who pertain, uh, profess to reason, we attempt to explain to children after punishing them in whatever form, why the, uh, why the thing, uh, why um, the wrong thing actually is wrong. Now for a dog, now the thing is, um, now the, now the thing is that a dog for the most part, um, a dog can be conditioned, but a dog does not have the abstract reasoning to determine why something is wrong. So, for that dog, um, using electric shock or food or you know or some system of conditioning, um, classic Pavlovian conditioning, is effective in teaching the dog to you know to, to, to uh, right behavior. But with a child, um, a child actually is slowly developing rudimentary logic capability. So by explaining to a child why the, uh, what they're doing, is, uh, the, what they're doing um, why their wrong action is wrong, will not only train them in, uh, will not only teach them the basic logic behind why it is wrong, but will also teach them to use their logical capabilities to assess whether something is right or wrong at a later date. Just simply slapping a child, um, you know, just simply slapping a child for something because of the fact that it's wrong or not, all that will do is just encourage them to abuse the, uh, uh, that, that, all that will do is that it will just encourage them to spank children arbitrarily without possibly understanding the moral framework behind uh, why an action is right or wrong and the complexity. <laughs> Effectively, it doesn't teach them philosophy at all or it doesn't teach them logic. Um, it doesn't teach them real morals. It just simply teaches them th this is right, this is wrong. Um, and even in some cases, uh, there are some parents out there who just simply hit kids arbitrarily because they don't let, not uh, just because of the, hat they have, the fact they happen to be in a bad mood, mean drunks, etc., um, a la child abuse. And most of the psychological cases they found is that all it really does, rather than actually teaching a kid uh, you know, to tell the difference between right and wrong, is that instead it actually just teaches them to pass on the cycle of abuse. So... I guess my the main crux of my argument here is that why uh, using an electronic collar on a child is wrong. Um, if you're doing it as funny, then I think that uh, then then uh, uh, if 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 um, if by your logic for the lulls is okay, then it would, it should be perfectly fine for me to strap electrodes to your uh, to your nuts and simply uh, turn it up to maximum and inflict the most maximum amount of pain I possibly can on your nuts. And uh, and my defense should be, well, I did it for the lulls. I mean, you know, that, uh, you know, th by that logic, I should be able to torture you to death and consider, and, th and that be considered morally right. Or, or, or I should be, uh, you know, I should be able to do anything immoral to you that we would consider immoral by our culture. Uh, you know, that we, anything that is, that, that humans would consider immoral from a rational standpoint, and it should be defensible by be cut, uh, uh, for the lulls. So I trust you were joking there. But secondly, 
um, I would consider it immoral to use a electronic collar of any sort on a child because a child is a sentient being, uh, and by sentient I mean has enough logical capability to understand why something is wrong, um, you know, with, an, with enough explanation. Uh, for example, uh, a friend of mine, uh, this is just a pure example to, uh, to illustrate the point. It's not meant as evidence to support my point. But um, assuming that a child does have some degree of logical capability, uh, there was a friend of mine who used to actually uh, swat his kid uh, just because of the fact that he, uh, he had tried everything, you know, uh, reward and punishment system. He had tried to explain it in some different ways about, you know, like just eat or what have you, right? Um, you know, just eat, you know, eat what is put in front of you because dad knows best, the appeal to authority fallacy. Um, and when that failed, he actually swatted his kid uh, for not eating what was put in front of him on the table. Now, I actually heard about this from him, and I said, put the kid on the line for me. What I did, uh, like I said, I was just conversing with him over the phone. Uh, what I did was I actually told the kid that if he didn't eat, uh, I pointed out to him that he did, uh, I, uh, I said to him, did he want to be sick? You know, I'm assuming the kid's been sick before with something and he didn't like it. I pointed out to him that not eating would actually make him sick. So therefore, uh, and since, uh, and that his dad has the expertise, uh, that his dad understands uh, what types of foods in terms of eating will not make him sick, but will make him healthy. And since he didn't want to be sick, he should therefore eat what his dad put in front of him. It actually worked. Uh, this explanation, now the kid was about five. The kid was about five, but he was being swatted considerably because of the fact that he just wasn't eating what his dad told him. This technique actually worked uh, in terms of explanation. Uh, in my case, my dad actually raised me um, pri primarily, even when I was four, um, with uh, talking about logic. Uh, the one exception to the one time he hit me, the force in that case was actually a uh, was actually being used as a practical demonstration. Um, uh, th this is one of those few instances where I believe corporal punishment is very effective. If a child runs out in front of a car, it is actually a good idea in some cases to use some form of corporal punishment with them, and here's why. Rather than just simply going, uh, rather than just simply uh, swatting them and saying it's wrong to hit in front of a car. After pulling a kid away from a car, swatting them so they feel pain, and then saying, that car will cause ten times more pain than what I caused, will actually teach them not to run in front of a car. Because a car will cause that much pain, and the pain in that case is a practical demonstration. Uh, in, that case, the, uh, in that case, the pain uh, can be used as evidence or as a teaching tool of what the car will actually cause, uh, rather than a... Uh, like an example of a lab report in physics, rather than uh, using it as a uh, as a as a as an appeal to um, using corporal punishment just to teach right or wrong for corporal punishment's sake uh, or for fear of pain is the appeal to force fallacy. Using uh, corporal punishment as a demonstration of what some other things, such as uh, getting hit by a car, etc., um, uh, you know uh, what sort of pain that will cause. Uh, uh, that is a useful demonstration. Like. <laughs> That's a useful textbook demonstration for a kid. So, um, the same with electric shock collars. Unless the electric shock can be used to demonstrate, note that I said can, uh, can actually be used to demonstrate, uh, um, you know, uh, pain or, or something like that that will be physically generated in the world, you know, uh, by a real world event, which I doubt, unless the electric shock collar can be used for that, it is inhumane because the child is a sentient being, and otherwise, and, and there are much more effective techniques in demonstrating to the child why something is wrong. Okay, I think I've explained my point. I probably belabored it a bit. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd uh, cover this a bit, uh, Amazing Atheist, uh, so this way you'd be able to... You get my drift. You know, this was the only bit I felt refuting on uh, your stuff. Other than that, it's good. So keep up the good, keep up the good work. Later.